let's talk about lab two. Okay. Lab two, when I was up in Tulsa, I probably spent more time on this lab than any other lab, but you won't, right? The reason is I absolutely love this lab. When I did it, it's like, wow, it was amazing. I didn't know you could do it this way. I figured it out and I did it over and over and over and over. I got to the point where I could do it really fast. I probably spent 80 hours on it. You don't need to spend 80 hours, maybe 76. It won't take you that long, but yeah. Point is, it's a, as long as you do the lab, it's fun. So many people figure out how to do this, and they actually use it in their real lives. You now, IT Services brought a darn computer over. This was right before Christmas. Someone on campus had a Mac, got corrupt, and they lost everything. So IT Services tried to recover the files. Got nothing. I got all of them. So between lab two, when we do it by hand, and lab three, when we use tools, it's something you'll probably use throughout your life. It's pretty neat the way it works. Okay. Now, you're going to use, uh, you're going to open your quiz up and it's going to tell you which image to, image to use. Some of you have already opened it. Now, I think Mountain Dew might only, might not have five of everything. But I think I edited the assignment to actually say that some of these might not have five. You can't find five, then go with it. There's a couple of them like that. But, um, so, we're going to walk through this. Now, has everybody been able to get to the software? Okay, you know how it says here, use your Raider email account? Got another one today asking for access. Let me explain why I do that. This software costs money. Some of the software costs thousands of dollars. If I open it up to the entire world to download, it sucks. So this way you have to log in with your Raider account. So if you send me a request for access, I'm going to deny it every single time. Your Raider account automatically has access. So go into Google with your Raider Google account and it'll let you download the files. Okay? I understand how that works. Because I have literally had people around the world requesting files. No, I'm not giving you our software. We pay for this software. And we only have so many licenses. And all of a sudden, you know, if I get, you know, a thousand people trying to access FTK, you guys are screwed. You're never going to get your licenses to work. So, yeah, you're going to need some software from in there. Um, let's talk about, so let's go to the lab. Lab two, this one right here. It's due on February 4th. This is next Monday. Okay. To gain an understanding how to mainly recover files. Now, lab three is to do it with automated tools. Don't cheat. Because on the exam, I'm going to ask you questions that if you use the automated tools, you're not going to know the answer to. And, yeah, the exam, did I tell you how long you get for the midterm? 28 minutes. 28 minutes for the midterm. 28 minutes. And you can't get the answers quickly. Like, if, you, if you've never done it, you know, you're not going to do good. And I was literally talking to a student today, got one B, and it was in this class because he wasn't ready for the midterm. And he basically got a zero on it. And that made a grade to him, so don't let that happen to you, okay? So the scenario is you've been called to a crime scene, and you got a hard drive. Now someone has taken it and has deleted all their files and then formatted them. Let's talk what happens. Okay, when I have a drive, I don't care if it's a USB drive, CD, whatever kind of drive it is, what happens when you delete a file? Does anybody know? It marks it as open to write on. It marks it as open to write. But what does it, okay, how does it mark? Does anyone know? What? It changes like a, a bit, right? It changes the first character in the name to hex E5, which is a Sigma character, which basically tells Windows I don't need this file anymore. But yeah, it doesn't delete the file. Here's one thing. Go home tonight, take a large file, and copy it. And you'll see it'll be copying, you know, copying for a while. Then delete it. Now, if it was truly deleting it, it should take a while, shouldn't it? It should take it ex almost exactly. Right. But no, you hit delete, gone. Because all it does is it marks that first character, I no longer need this. And then the operating system can overwrite it as needed. So that's what happens when you delete a file. So what happens when you format the drive? Uh, it marks something at the 
front of the drive that says the whole thing is available for that. Pretty much. What it does, there's something called the file allocation table. Think of it as the table of contents of your textbook. It rips it out. So if I go to your textbook, rip the table of contents out, what happened to the contents of the book? It's still there. It's still there. You might have to search around for it, but it's still there. So we no longer know where the files are, but they're still there. So that's what deleting and formatting does. So what we're going to do is we've done that. I've deleted and formatted. So now we're going to get those files back by hand. And it's actually pretty simple to do. Now, I've already created an image of a drive with FTK Imager. Years ago, I had students do this. I would take a piece of evidence and I'd go around the room one by one. Have you make an image of it? Never went well. For a while there, we had what's called the BL and the AL image. The before Linda and the after Linda. <laughs> Linda was, she was different. Because I told people, I'm going to give you this drive, you plug it in, and here's exactly how to make an image. So I was going around the room, and everybody's doing that just fine. I go to Linda, and she's over there doing stuff and clicking and moving on. So what are you doing? She goes, I'm copying my files onto it. Well, the moment you change an image at all, it's never the same again. It's never, the, you know, you can't. It can never be put back together again in the same exact way. So we end up having the before Linda image and the after Linda image. So we will work with images later on, but for this one, I may be image for you. Disk image, not picture. Correct. Disk image. Good point. Good point. I image, in this case, I image a 16 megabyte flash drive. Try finding a 16 megabyte flash drive. What I ended up doing was I took a bigger one and partitioned it into 16 megs just so I had something small because you know, we didn't need a big one for this. We're going to be using a tool called HXD or WinHex, or I'm sorry, Hex Editor. Don't use other tools. If you do, do it manually because there are tools that will complete this entire assignment in literally 10 seconds. But you're not going to get anything out of it, okay? I'm going to demo hex, uh, win, or, uh, win hex, the hex editor. But HXD is also up there. I actually put the brand new version of HX, HXD that was released on the 16th of January. I just put it up in that folder five minutes before it came in the room. So that's available for you. Don't use any automated tools. Which would you prefer? <sighs> win hex, easy to use, but it's a demo only. Okay. WinHex. Well, the Win well, the Hex Editor or WinHex is called WinHex oh. Hex Editor or whatever. But they both they both. I would much rather use something else, but because those tools do it automated. But I'm going to show you. But they're they're very similar. Okay. Do it by yourself. And and one thing I ask that has happened every semester. We have the Cyber Lounge in there, and a lot of people go in there and do their homework. Please delete your stuff when you're done. Because you know, we're going to get to the John the Ripper chapter or the uh, PRTK chapter. Well, imagine Summer goes in there. Summer spends 10 hours getting her homework done and doesn't delete the answers off the machine. Josh walks in, the answers are right there. I mean, is it fair? No, it isn't. Yeah, Josh might, well, he probably wouldn't take them, but the point is, Everybody needs to learn how to do it. Now, if I go in there and find the machines running with you not there, I will delete the files. Because so many people just leave them there. And it's like, especially leaving these sites, don't touch, breaking passwords. And I look and they're all on the screen, disappearing one after another. I'm like, so now you know. If you just happen to walk in, you might see half the answers. That's why for, for a John the Ripper assignment, there's 2,000 different ones. You randomly get them assigned to hopefully solve that problem. Okay. I just hope you learn that it's fun. So um, you do have to use an FTK or an imager to determine the MD5. What MD5 is, is message digest five. Okay. If I was to go out, see so I happen to know Summer's name. So Summer's car, I'm assuming you got a car. Smash her windshield. What's gonna happen to it? And I can do a bazillion pieces. Can we ever put that windshield together? back together again. No, it will never be the same again. So basically her windshield, when it's shattered, is going to come up with a specific signature 
of broken pieces. No two windshields will crack the same or anything. Well, when we image files, no two files will generate the same hash or the same image unless they are the same file. Now, if you take the same file and do it multiple times, you should end up with the same image. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm actually going to show you a very easy way to do that. Same signature, yes. Now, um, I just happened to pick a random file from a couple years ago. Where is it? Come on. And I called it Lab 2, image sample. Now, this is a .001 image. That means it's, it's not compressed whatsoever. Because doing this by hand, if it's compressed, you're never going to see it. You're never going to need to solve it. So this is, excuse me, what's called a raw image. Now, you need to get an image, uh, I'm sorry, the MD5 of this. Now, you can use tool like, tools like FTK Imager, which I do not have installed on here at the moment. But if you go online and, and the line, MD5 checker. I mean, it's so easy. You just click right here on line MD5. Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take my file and I'm going to drop it right there. I drop it there. There you go. There's my MD5. There. Super easy to use. I mean, so you're going to use this multiple times through the semester. If you ever need the MD5, just put it here. Done. Solves it instantly. You can click the choose button and upload, or you can just drag it on. Where is the where is the one we compare it with? Where's the um, you, there is none to compare it with. You don't have a text file in that. Folder. No, the point is I want you to get that, and I know what the correct one is. And that's your quiz question. And if you put in the correct number, obviously it's correct. If you put in the wrong number, it's wrong. But no, what Williams is talking about is normally when you download software and images, they'll say. Here, they give you a text file of the correct, you know, MD5 well, hash. Post it in a public right, they'll account. put it there so I can verify it. We're not doing that because I want you to be able to calculate. And if I give you it, then how do I know you even calculate it? Okay. So, all right. Pretty simple to get there. So you're going to take your image. Once you open the quiz, it'll tell you which one to use. And under modules, you'll find them all. They're literally there. You just download each one. What you're going to do is you're going to recover five of each of these data types. GIF, JPEG, PNG, PPT, DOC, XLS, and PDF. Now, you should get 35 total, but I think I put a comment in here that uh, one of them, I think it's Mountain Dew, might only have four. There's a comment here somewhere. Okay. This is what it's going to look like. Here, I want you to submit it. Okay. It says, I was assigned the image. It's going to ask you what image you were assigned. You're going to select it or type in, and I forget which one. They're going to give you five GIFs, five JPEGs, five, just put it in a table. They go, you know, there's our table of, this would be our table of GIFs. Then we would have a table of JPEGs, a table of PNGs. Here's the PowerPoints, and I say, you know, take it just like above, you know, table of docs, table of XLS. Okay. Here's the note. It has been noticed that some images may be missing a specific document, such as an XLS or PPT. If this is true, just retrieve whatever is available, and I'll give you full credit. So, in other words, if you have Mountain Dew and there's only four PowerPoints, retrieve four, and then the fifth block say there was only four. And I'll give you credit. For it, okay. Now, every semester I change the way you have to submit this assignment. So, hopefully, this is better. Because the last time it took me forever to grade it. it took me forever. Still, I'm still grading. So, change. All right. So, you all know kind of what you're going to submit. You haven't learned how to do it yet, but okay. You, at least you know kind of what you're going to do. Okay. I downloaded WinHex and HXD. Now, WinHex, if you download it, it has an EX underscore on it. Anyone know what that means? Replace replace the underscore with an E. The reason is sometimes when you put an executable up online somewhere, it won't let you download it. You'll probably be like, whoa, that's an executable. It could be bad. Yeah, I know. So put an underscore, download it, and you just change it back. Pretty simple to do. So when you click on this, and we're going to run this. Now, this is an old version of software. It will ask you to update it. Do not. Okay. 
Now, if you happen to go in the forensic software folder and see something that says license key, you know, it's up to you. So what is, uh, make sure, yeah, that's fine. Wait, did, it, did it not install? Do I seriously not have enough hard drive space? What space do I have on this drive? I'm out of free space. 380 gigs. I think that's enough. Let me run as administrator. Maybe I have to run as administrator. Uh, it's not 380 gigs, it's three megs. <laughs> you, come on. <coughs> you can do it. There we go. Okay. This is just the one I've been using for years. This is the one I went to Tulsa. But the license key that's out there will make it work. Uh, but uh, if you update it, will no longer function. I don't know where the license key came from. Now, one way you can open your files, you can take your lab image and just drop it right in here. Come on. Just drop it. Okay, maybe not. That's weird. Should be able to say open. Well, let's just try to finish. It should open right up. And X. Is it Hex Workshop? Oh, I keep getting it mixed up. It's Hex Workshop. There is WinHex. It's Win -Hex, not WinHex. It's Hex Workshop. Drop you on there. There we go. Okay. I don't know why. I did. Okay. So what I did was I opened the program and just dropped it right on it. And it opens up. Now, you'll know. It'll actually come up and tell you what's being in it. This is MP5, which means it's a fat formatted disk. This is in fact not NTFS, and these are non-fragmented files. Let me explain what the difference is. It's very important. These are much easier to do, by the way. When you write a file, say, um, let's do an example. Say you're working on your homework. It's got to be a 25-page paper. What's the odds you write all 25 pages at one time? Well, pretend you don't. We're going to write page one on the first day and close it. Then we're going to play Minecraft for a while. We're going to whatever you all do on your computer. Then we're going to write page two. So we're going to be doing other stuff on our machine. What the Windows, what the operating system, it writes part of the file. And then when you do other stuff, it puts it after it. And then when you try to make that file larger, it's like there's something in the way. So it fragments the file. So at the end of the first part, it says go over here. So it basically gets this part, and then this part, and then that part. It'll jump all over and get the parts. For this assignment, they're all in one nice little file. Nice little line. They're not fragmented, so it's much easier for you to do your job. Okay? I did that on purpose. That was a pain to do. Okay. So this is a FAT12. It's a very, you know, it's, it's like not FAT32 or anything. Now. We need to recover some file types. I'm going to pick, first I want to show you this website. By the way, you need to know this website because you will use it on the test and everything else. The name is Gary Kesser, K-E-S-S-S-L-E-R, file signature. Look, at, even Google knows what it is. Gary Kessler is an excellent guy. I actually uh, went to uh, many conferences with him. He made this wonderful website that lists all these different file signatures. Okay. Goes on and on and on and on and on. Let me explain what a file signature is. So if I take a file and name it you know, a word file, you know, word file, you know, whatever, ken.doc.doc. What does the .doc mean? It means document, but that just tells Windows what to open it with. But what if I name it like that executable? I named it dot ex underscore. Then I changed the name. So what if I rename stuff? Files have what's called a signature in them. Okay. I'm going to show you an example of one. We're going to download one. Let's go on here to Google. And let's download a picture. Okay, we need a picture of someone. I'm going to get a picture of dog. Dog. JPG. We'll do a JPEG. Okay, which dog do we want? No, this is we're gonna this is a cute one. This is a cute puppy. I'm like my dogs that are driving me crazy. 
Okay, we're gonna go to the desktop, we're gonna go over here to the friends X, and we're going to dump boo the dog dot jpeg here. Okay. So now if I go to this folder, you'll see we got boo the dog. Everybody like boo the dog? So what would happen if I go to boo the dog? Now it's an executable. It even tells me, and now it's an application. The icon chains and Windows thinks is now an executable. What happens when I click on it? Well, let's see, one run. I can't run this. I don't know what it is. Something's wrong with it. So basically, the extension tells Windows what to open it with. But, you know, years ago when I was in the military, and most of you were too young for this. Windows used to come to Solitaire. Y'all remember Solitaire? Some of you remember Solitaire? Okay. Well, I was in the military. So what do you not do on government machines? Play games. Do not play games on government computers. So you take sol.exe, rename it to sol.doc. Now it's a document and no one does anything with it. When you go play the game, you rename it real quick, play the game, then rename it back and no one ever catches you and you're good to go. <laughs> The point is extensions really just tell Windows what to open it with. Well, let's go look at, actually, let's, let's get, ask Gary first what a JPEG signature is. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do Control F for find that JPG. And it goes right down here and it tells me it's a generic JPG file format. The extensions are JPE, JPG, JPEG, whatever, okay? Now it tells me what the file should begin with. In this case, it's FFD8. And the file should end with FFD9. You see the header and the trailer? See how I got that? Not all files have trailers. We'll get to that in a minute. So if I take Boo the dog and dump Boo into my program here, you'll see it tells me what, what type of file is it? It's a JFIF, which is a GIF file. What's it start with? FFD8. That's the hexadecimal value for the signature of a JPEG file. I will be asking you questions on the test, yes. So JPEG is a lossy format, and every time you resave it, it's going to it's gonna remove some of the data. So right. Is that going to alter the... I'm not asking for the signature of the individual file, so you'll be fine. Um, in the past, I did, but then I had that problem. Because okay. JPEGs also actually store a thumbnail of themselves inside themselves, which causes more of a problem. So, but for right now, a JPEG starts with FFD8. We saw it on Gary's page, and I just verified the fact. So doing this assignment, say you want to get a PDF. Well, I don't know what a PDF should start with. Well, let's, let's find out. Let's find a PDF. We're not going to ask Gary this time. I'm going to go over to Google and say, I want a dog.pdf. And here's a PDF, PDF about dogs. So I'm going to get this. I'm going to download this file right here. It's called whatever.pdf. Okay. Again, I'm going to look at Gary's page. So I downloaded a PDF. I'm going to dump my PDF in here. And the PDF starts with 25, 54, and so on and so forth. Or in ASCII, it actually starts with percent PDF, which is easier to remember. Okay, so you can for each of these file types, you can just throw them in here, and it'll tell you what the signatures are. Then you can use those to search. Now let's go back to Boo the dog here real quick. So Boo starts with FFD8, and what should it end with? Should end in FFD9. So the cool thing is, since I dumped the picture right in here, if I go to the very end, I see FFD9. Easy enough. Everybody see FFD9 right here? Okay. So now we know. So if that's true, I should be able to go over here to my image and I should say edit, find. There it is. I couldn't find, couldn't find, find. Uh, I can change it from hex value. Now, the left side is the hex values, the right side is the string value, the text string. So if you're searching, for FFD8, make sure you set it to hex. If you're searching for PDF, make sure you set it to string. In this case, we're doing hex, so we're going to do we're going to go FFD8. 
And I'm going to say find. So I found one. Now, one thing I want you to do, well, let's find it again. I just made it big. Let's find it again. Edit, find. No, I didn't want to find all yet. There's a reason why. Okay. Now, when you edit it, I need you to change this so it is 16 columns wide. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's not going to fit. Well, yeah, I can. 15, 16. Okay, so it's now 16 columns wide. Okay, I'm going to go back up to the top, and I'm going to go find, and it's going to find it, and you'll notice something. Okay, you notice how the FFD8 is at the very beginning. What do you see it before it? Bunch of zeros. Okay, when you write to a computer, okay, then you got a drawer in your house, in your kitchen. You've got a kitchen drawer. Okay. Some of mine in my house are totally full and they're overflowing, but pretend they're not. Okay. So if you got a drawer that's set up for spoons, okay, that's all that's in this drawer, it's just spoons. So you put spoons in it, then what happens when you're done with spoon? What's the rest of the drawer? Empty space. And since that drawer can only store spoons, nothing else can go in there. Then I got a drawer for forks. So the forks start right here. So these are what's called sectors or clusters. Even if you're writing a 1K file, it's going to take up at least 4K in here. Because Windows stores it in chunks, okay? So if you're writing a 1K file, a 2K file, a 3K file, even a 4K, it's still going to take up the same amount of space. That's the way Windows does. You can actually edit all the way up to 32K. That 32 allowed us to change that. So what this is telling me, this is at the beginning of a sector. When you're searching for something, and the FFD8 is at the beginning of a line. It's at the beginning of a sector. Okay. Now, we might, let's, I'm going to do another search. I'm going to go find again. Find next is F3. Now, that's probably the beginning of another file. It would be great because it's at the beginning. i do F3 again. That's another one. Actually, these are all. Aha. There's one. That one, it does have some zeros before it, but it's. Doesn't it kind of look like it's in the middle of something? So it could be, now with PowerPoint and all that, you ever make a PowerPoint and throw a picture in it? Sometimes those pictures will automatically convert to OLE embedded objects. Sometimes they'll keep the original format, depending on what they are. So it could be a JPEG inside of a document. Or if I'm looking over here, it looks like it's JPEG inside of a JPEG. So that's probably a thumbnail of a JPEG inside of a JPEG. Okay, so see how this gets a little confusing. When we do PDFs, now, so this is the beginning of the JPEG, but if this is the beginning of a PDF, well, every page in the PDF has another starting of the PDF. So you need to look for the beginning and the ending that's kind of got nothing around it. So you don't want to get to just one page. Okay. So let's, let's, now, someone mentioned do you find all. I can do that in this tool. I can go find, and I can say, find all instances. There it goes. It found every instance. There's all my files. So if you notice, the first few, one, two, three, four, five, or, okay, then they're all, okay, there was, there was the fifth one. And look at all the rest of these. When I did this, I was nice. I put, like, all the JPEGs on. Then all the GIFs on, then all the PDFs. So they are all grouped together. So that's why you saw the first five. Two, three, four, five. And then we get to the other junk where they're kind of in the middle of stuff. So it's probably inside of a PowerPoint or whatever. It could be inside of a Word document. So kind of, kind of with, me, with me here. Okay. So I'm going to go to this first one. This first one starts off at offset 8,000. So I'm going to open up a little notepad here, and I'm going to say it starts at 8,000. Now, one thing, I, there's two different things. Like the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find, what did it end with? D9. Did you find it? Oh, I did? Uh, not bad. So let's cancel, go back. Okay, we were there. Okay, now edit, find. Okay. 
59, and there we go. Now, if I scroll back a little bit, you'll now notice that the file ended at 59 and a bunch of blank space after it. Everybody see that? So this is probably the correct ending of my file. And this is that location. The location is written at the bottom. It is 12062. Yes. Okay. The beginning is 12060. One, two. Now, if you look down here, it actually tells me I actually have 12062 highlighted. Okay. So now what I can do, so we want 8000 through 12062. That's right. Okay. I can go edit. How many bytes is that? Uh, one four eight one 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 three six. But what I can do is I'm gonna select the block. I'm gonna go hex eight thousand, and I'm gonna go. Actually, you know, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go to let's go to eight thousand first. Eight. There's a go to. Let's go to eight thousand from the beginning. Okay. Oh, did I? Oh, darn it. Go to, oh, hex. Yeah, that makes a big difference. There you go. We are now at the beginning. Okay. Now I'm going to say select block. I'm going to say ending position was 12062. 12062. And say okay. What it did is it selected from the beginning to the end. I'm going to do edit copy. File new, edit, paste. It's going to be like, whoa, you sure you want to do this? Well, yeah, it's in a blank place. So now if I did this, now you're going to notice, I got too much, didn't I? Yeah. So it's actually 061. Okay, so what? Delete that. Easy enough to do this. I'm going to save this. I'll save it in my desktop under my forensics folder. Now I will tell you this is trial and error until you've done it a thousand times. This is going to be called file1.jpg. I don't know what it is. I literally just randomly picked a file. It's a train. So if you guys happen to be doing the train image, there you go. There's an image for you. Okay. Ever see how I did that? JPEGs, super easy. Beginning to end. As long as you look for the blank before it or blank after it, you know you got a good one. If you find one that's kind of in the middle of a line, that's probably something else. So the file we get is just going to be one uh, image. No, you're going to get one with all files in it. Okay, that's what I'm, you're not going to have uh, separate images for the JPEGs. No, 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 no. Images. They're okay. going to get exactly okay. like that thing I gave you. It's going to be lab2trains.001. All your stuff's in that one thing. Okay, so everybody okay on how to do JPEGs? How would you find the next one? Just go to find the next? Yeah. yeah. Now, so we got this one. I can close this one. So we're back to our original one. I could, you know, scroll on down here forever. So just to make sure that I've got this correct, we go to the Gary Kessler to find out what the header and the trailer yes. are supposed to be. Then we Go into your hex thingy and type in those numbers and type in find and then type in the header. First, you dump in your image file. We're going to do another. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First, yeah, first thing you need is to put your image in there. Because you're going to open your quiz. It's going to say you're doing trains or Mountain Dew or whatever you got. Then download that from the content page. It literally is there. Then put this into this program. It'll look exactly like this. And then do a find all for FFT8. And you know where the beginning of each of the JPEGs are. Then I get this from the endings. Now I will give you a hint. Okay, see how this one ended right here? Well, the next one doesn't start for a while. Do you see all that blank space? There's the next one. See the next one? See that? So the first one started at 800 or 8,000. 
the next one starts at 13,000. You can technically say it started at 8,000 and ended at 12,999. Because JPEGs aren't that picky. If there's a few zeros at the end, it's good. It'll still all work. So you literally could say, you know, if I went over here, okay, let's. That only applies to the end, though. It is picky about. Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So I'm going to do fine. I'm going to change this back to F8, FFD8. And I'm going to do find all. Because you'll see. 8,000 was the first one, 13,000 is the second one. So you can technically say the first image starts at 8,000, ends at 12,999. Second image starts at 13, ends at 22,999. Nice text, so wouldn't it be S? Well, oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah these are X, yes, good point. F, F, F. Good point. I was thinking decimal. Okay. You can change this to be in decimal. And I actually made a special recording about changing back and forth and how they meet, what they will, how they do it. So he's got a good point. So I mean, actually, let's look at 13. Actually, let's go back from 8,000. So we're, actually, we're at 13,000 right here. Okay. So at the very bottom, it says 13,000. I'm sorry, because I'm going to be at C. I'm going to hit the left arrow to go back one. So now my cursor is over here. See that? Now my offset is 12 FFF. Thank you for pointing that out. I totally believe that. But to subtract one when you're running in hex, you know, it's FFF. And yeah, we haven't really covered that much. Hopefully you've covered another class. If not, I have tons of recordings on it. And I even have a special recording just in this one, something about a hex calculator conversion thing I did. So and if you watch the one about Windows files, I explained it really well in there too. Okay. You can change this somewhere in here to show it in decimal. I just don't know where it is. It's in here somewhere. Somewhere you can find it, but stick with X. It's easier because the numbers are huge in decimal. All right. Okay, on JPEG. It's pretty simple. Pick another data type. GIF. GIF. Okay. No. Nope. <laughs> I want to see if you guys the tough ones. <laughs> I do have a special recording just on Office documents. What? We're, we're doing we're doing gifts. Okay. Now, so gifts start 47, 49, 46, 38, so on and so forth. Or this, or just multiple types. Okay, you can see there's a bunch of different ones. And the ending is 003B. Now, the thing in parentheses, and that's what it looks like in the screen. Remember how on the PDF, it actually showed PDF, but this one you don't search for that instead. Now, depending on the versions, you know, there's 87, 89. So I'm going to search for, actually, I think, let me try something here. Edit, find, I'm going to try this, not, not sure it'll work. GIF, yeah, I think it will, actually. Yep, it does. It does work. Okay. No, but it's not going to be at the beginning of the file this way. That just... Yeah, it's finding the extensions. Well, that just sucks. Ah, there's one. It doesn't uh, add GIF 89A. You can. Or you can also put some spaces in front of it, too. But it did find one there, and it found another one there. There's the third one. There's the fourth one. There's the fifth one. That's it. So, I mean, it wasn't hard to find it. So using Gary's page, he gave us the hex for the string value. So you just got to kind of read it. You're like, that's actually hex. That's string. That's string. That's hex. So now it's not hard to understand. Yes? How will we know if there's, would there be a trailer for all of these? No. Like some, some of them, like office documents, there is no trailer. The easiest thing to do is go to the beginning of the next one and go backwards until the end of it. Okay? Now I want to grab a word document. So if there's no trailer, how do you know where the end of the document is? Go to the beginning of the next one. Okay, I actually covered in the recording, but it's pretty much trial and error. Just keep going until you find nothing. See, office documents are not documents. I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, let me create a Word document for you here, okay? 
they're not Word Doc. They're not. This is my document. Okay, Dogree, I have a Word document now. And we're going to put this on my desktop. We're going to put it in the Friendsix folder. And this is my document. Okay, do you all agree? I have a document there. Sure. It's called, this is my document. I'm going to open it up, and I have a document. Are you sure that's not a zip file? I think it's a zip file. This is a lie. <laughs> it's a zip file. An office document is a container of XML and all the other stuff that goes with it. The color and the fonts and all the XML data and everything. This will become very important when you do lab three. Because I'm going to ask you, what did you recover? You can tell me I recovered 15 zip files. If you didn't, you recovered five Word documents and five Excel files and five PowerPoints, but it's really a container. So it's kind of misleading the way that works. But you do agree that it open. And there's an XML file inside of it. And I can open these up and see different components of the Word document. I open this up and I can see, you know, the font tables and the settings and the styles and all that stuff. Does Kessler's um, website give you a signature for like the metadata within those containers? No. Okay. But if you search for, let's go, let's find Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office. Okay. It starts with V0. I know those are the, these are the new ones. Okay. The new ones start with PK. And PK is like PK zip. Some of you remember PK zip? Old office. Let's find the old ones. Let's find an old one. Power plan. Let's get to it. Oh, come on. That's perfect office. We need Microsoft Office. There it is. Okay. This is Microsoft Office. These are the kind you get in here. They start with V0, CF11, V0, and so on and so forth. All of them start with the same beginning. So really, Word, Excel, but they're all the same. They're all container, and just the contents on the inside are a little bit different. Now, and it tells you on here, there appears to be several subheader formats or then of course there's different subheaders. And this is actually very amazing. There's no ending. He talks about next. Let me find next on here. Next, that's not what we want. That's not what we want. Maybe he doesn't have it on here. Watch the recording, I'll explain that better. Because it's a little confusing. Get those last. And what and they're not hard. I literally walk through them in the demo I've been showed to you. Okay. I just it's in the one that says right here. Okay. Here's a little bit of additional things about recovering BMP files. I don't think I'm making you guys do BMP things. Here's one about using the hex to decimal calculator conversion that he was talking about. And where is the one about the word files? Word next right, uh, word <laughs> it's very short, like five minutes. And I, I talk more about sectors and clusters in there and how to convert back and forth and how to find them very easily. Because really, if you look every 200 hex bytes, that goes to the next sector. So you really don't have to keep scrolling. You just go, 200, is that the end of one? 200, 200, until you get to the end. Uh, one of my students wrote a program you go through the entire thing, get out every sector and join it all up. You can write it in Python, no problem. You can write it in pretty much anything. If you want to do that, go for it. That's, don't get one already made. You have to write it yourself. Okay, and there's your images, by the way. There's Mountain Dew, Pirate, Sheep, and Trains. Okay, so let's finish our GIF. We were on GIF. So, I lost my GIF, didn't I? GIF, okay. So it starts with that, ends in 3B. So right here, we're starting. That's at C8, C8, 1000. Now let's find 3B, which is technically going to be just up from this guy. Right there. See it right there? 3B in the 3B00. No, 003B. So it's right there. 
Okay, so it ends at zero zero C eight F A A E. So it's C A F A A E. Okay. What now? Now, if you do this, so when I'm going to go up here to this number, edit, go to this number, the beginning of my file. Then I'm going to go to this number. I'm going to say from here, edit, select block. I'm going to type in that, that. Now, if I go copy right here, if it crashes, I'm telling you, it will. It's because you selected too much. Okay. It can only hold so much memory in the program will crash. So what you can do, you can do, you can highlight it and then just do, uh, there's a way to save it out. I'll save that. Save selection. There it is. So I got it selected. So if you're copying it and it crashes, it's too much to put in memory. So highlight it just like it is and go file, save selection. Okay. Everybody see that? Save selection. We're going to call this as file 2.gif. So rather than copying it, bring up a new document, pasting it, and save. Now it's the same selection. It does it all one time. See the difference? Now, if I did it correctly, we should have a file. We have a train. Okay. Well, what happens? Let's go to my. Let's go to. Open up. Well, let's open up uh, the one we just did. Going to delete some of the stuff off the end. Sure, you want to delete it? Yes, I want to delete it. Save. Would you like to make a backup? No, I know what I'm doing. So now, oh, you suck, it still works. <laughs> yes. I mean, sometimes it works great if you get rid of stuff, sometimes it doesn't. Is that a JPEG? That's a GIF. Well, oh, because it didn't save. Save as the GIF. There you go. Now it's going to be dead. You <laughs> <laughs> really suck, dude. No, just because I told it I didn't want to make a backup. Let's. Delete here. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. File, save as. File 2. Do you want to overwrite it? Yes. There you go. Now it's dead. Yeah, it doesn't know what it's doing. But some documents, I mean, I've taken a forensics class where maybe you're trying to recover a PDF file and it's not complete. What you can do is you can take the header from a PDF and the trailer from the PDF, a known good PDF, and just paste that other junk in the middle, and a lot of times it'll open. Because the PDF is really just a bunch of separate pages all to join together. So it's very forgiving. So if you have a heading in the trailer, just throw the middle junk in. So it might not look great, but you might get some content on it. So, okay. So you, so you take the header, the header in the trailer, just like shove it in the middle. Yeah, just take a chunk of a good one, you know, of each end of the good one. And they just put you know the header on and the travel on and it might open. Well, it's crazy the way this stuff works. Now sometimes I've had where you got one bite too much and it doesn't open. So so it's you know not hard to do. Play with these. Do one type at a time. Do JPEG, GIF, PDF, TIFF, those are all easy. So if you're looking at the ASCII interpretation on the right hand side, yes. that's I mean that that can be a clue to what kind of data. Especially with Office documents. Because yeah. over here, you'll say, Microsoft Office document, but it'll be in Unicode. What that means is, it'll be like M period, I period, C. It'll be the word Microsoft with dots between it. It'll be Unicode. But you'll be able to read it. It's an Office document. So let me open up that document, which I just killed. So I'm going to open up this document, which is I renamed as a zip file. See how it has a PK in it? Now, if we go somewhere in here, so there's some XML references. Now, if you go somewhere near the end of it, I mean, look at how big it is, and I added one little sentence to it. And so, if you drop the text in there, 
the ASCII interpretation would be exactly what they said. And so sometimes. Right now, you saved it as ASCII format, right? That's yeah, but it's not always that easy. Okay. Sometimes it is. But see here, you can see this is the word. So sometimes if you're not sure, like I said, the header is all the same, put the end say minus of Excel or minus of PowerPoint or minus of whatever. So just you know, kind of look at it, it'll give you an idea. And if you save it and it doesn't open as Word, try Excel, or try PowerPoint. Now, one of the tools you can use next week will tell you they're all Word documents, which is fine. I, I accept it. They're just, you know, they're not all that great. So pretty simple stuff. Any questions on GIFs, JPEGs, or anything? Why did you find a sector with a bunch of tabs? That's still part of a document. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot of them, like JPEGs I showed you, you can actually go all the way to the end of the next one. Technically, that's not the end of the file. There's something called file slack and RAM slacks. So let me. Let me, um, let me get a notepad going here. I'm trying to do this so and put it on the recording. This is a long document. Okay. Okay, format, word wrap. Okay, we have a very long document here, okay? Y'all agree with that? Yeah. All right. So if I mark this document as being deleted, the file name, the first character is going to be replaced with an E5 symbol. That way, say, I no longer need this place. Okay. Then what happens if I was to overwrite this file with something teeny, just like the word, you know, you know, Apple? What happened to the rest of my document? It's still there. This is called file select. Okay. So my new document that just contained the word Apple. Uh, it had a little bit of other stuff in it as well, but yeah, like, it was just, we put new for Apple and then like an end marker. Yeah, it could have a little bit on, depending what it is. The rest of that stuff is now orphaned, pretty much, because this app, the word Apple, is now in its place in the operating system, and the rest of the stuff is no longer. I mean, there's no reference to it whatsoever. Because even if we go to the beginning of the sector, now we're going to find the word Apple. But that's leftover stuff, and that's where you find a lot of your stuff in forensics. Because people will save files and rewrite files and delete files and overwrite. Think of our cache. Every time you open up a web page, all that stuff's cached. It's all written, then it's deleted and written. So that's why you get all this stuff. At some point, are we going to use this to uh, reverse engineer any file? Um, Not in this program. class. Okay. Not, that is in reverse engineering class. Okay. Yes. We do that. Um, but, yeah. You know, so you might find, so at the end of that JPEG, for this example, it's all zeros. Because what I did was I went through my image, I deleted everything, I formatted it, I ran a wiper over, I overwrote the image so it was totally clear. Then I put your files on there, then I just deleted and formatted it so I, we just messed up the title. So all this leftover file slack is not there. But in the real world, you probably have a JPEG that starts at FF58, ends in FF59, and after the FF59, it'll be a pile of junk. So selecting all the way to the next sector is not necessarily a good idea because that's not really part of the file. You see what I mean? You're getting the file plus the leftover. So I put in one spoon in the drawer, but all the other stuff that used to be in the drawer is still there. So, you know, it's kind of like, this is still taking up space that's no longer needed, okay? And I cover that a whole bunch more in another class. So we do it with NTFS, and you fragmented files and all that other stuff. But, you know, so I'm just trying to show you that this is a small portion of how this works. But it works. Uh, it works. That Mac drive over the holiday, I recovered everything. And they're like, oh, my God, you saved my life. And, you know, I will tell you, I've recovered files for lots of people. You know what I'm scared of? Seeing what they don't want me to see. I recovered some files, and this one guy goes, you only recovered the specific files of my... I told my program to go. Yes, I saw. I can no longer unsee. We won't talk about this again. Yes. But right now, 
I just got that one file that you asked for. Oh, good, good, good. Yes. Have you ran into the same thing with uh, the file recovery being harder to do with SSDs? How much the longer it's on last semester? No, I haven't done SSDs because they do yeah. save a little bit different. Apparently, all the different manufacturers are different. Yeah, but it sucks. So, like, it's even yeah. Apple has a different like, thing. You have to use, like, you can't use traditional SSDs in an Apple like this. You have to buy, like, a special SSD. That are like that. So even between manufacturers, wow. of Apple is going to be different from PC versus Western Digital versus whatever CDA. Hmm. It's great, but yeah, the one I just recovered did not have anything too bad on it. It was to be a hundred pictures of this girl with no clothes on, but not showing anything. So it was always like you know this and the you know and the you know. <laughs> how do you come up with those poses? You know. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things. Now, uh, by law, if I did see child porn, I would record it. You mean a woman? Yes, a, a woman. Yeah. A woman. Okay. But no, the other one was not a woman. It wasn't. <laughs> it's was not exciting. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Okay. So, any questions on this before we? I, I think I, you know, explained it pretty well. Start going through these. You're. If you do it the same way I did, you should be able to get down to when we get about about 30 seconds. I said, I love it. I did it over and over and over and over and over. Now, one of the images which I took off, I think was Italy. I put the PowerPoints on there and didn't, re or didn't think about it that the PowerPoints had thousands of pictures inside of them. So the students went to recover JPEGs and instead of five, there was 5,000. So my, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> so I think, I think the ones on there are pretty much like the Mountain Dew ones. I deleted all the other pictures. So it should be easier to do. So, All right. I think that's all you need for lab two. Um, uh, two. You did give us an example of the format that you wanted it submitted. Yes, I did. It is. That's a, let's cover that one more time. I said it changes every semester. What I did last semester was I asked her what's the, the MD5 was. Then I just give me all the files you cover, you know, pay, you know, upload all the files, but then I had to download each one manually. And I couldn't just say, you have to get them all 100. I had to manually go in and grade every single, I had to give everyone a grade in Canvas. It's like, no, you did not grade them all. They're all there. So, is so, the MD5 for the, for the file or for each specific? The MD5 is for the overall image itself. So when you okay. download Sheep, MD5 or Sheep. That's it. Okay. And they'll ask you that question. So you're going to say, okay, I was assigned sheep. They're going to give me five JPEGs of sheep. Now, obviously, this is not sheep over here, okay? I just stuck some random pictures on here. This is because I figured if I gave you an example with five sheep, and whoever got sheep would be like, sweet, I'm done. So, no, I randomly picked one of each. So that's why there's sheep, Mountain Dew. I think I did Italy, trains, and pirates. Okay. So then you're going to give me a table with five JPEGs and five PNGs and five PPTs. Now, I know what they're supposed to be. So don't just pick five random ones and throw them in because I know what they're supposed to look like. Okay. And uh, on the test, I'm going to ask you some specific questions about headers and stuff like that. Like if I said, okay, what file type starts with FFD8? JPEG, simple. So if I was you, of those types we use, make a little chart. F58, F59 is JPEG. That when you go to take the test and says, what file type is this? You'd be like, uh, JPEG. And at least know where Gary's page is. Y'all know how to use find, don't you? Let me show you again if you don't. Control F brings up that. And if I want to get a PNG, it goes right to PNG. Now it's going to tell me PNG files start with set PNG. And they end in this. Okay. I didn't hear where you said we're supposed to submit the MD5. Oh, when you bring up the quiz, the last one. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't show you that picture. Yeah. The first question says, what's the MD5? Actually, the first question says, how many days early is this? <laughs> and by the way, I do check the math on there because a lot of you started on one day, but time you actually submit, it's the next day. So I, I fixed that. Day. You said five, and it was truly four. I think I was counting the actual days. Oh, yeah. So I was putting yeah. the data. 
That's all right. <laughs> I would hate to give you too many points. Okay, but no, this is a great page and it's updating it all the time. So, you know, you can go through it. Just know where it is. Okay. Any questions on this? So what you mentioned on the table to submit, we would just like do that on a Word document? Yes, exactly. Just do it on a Word document. Then what you can do, and I will actually show you. I'm going to do a preview of this quiz. Here's what the actual quiz looks like. This is the real thing. Okay. This is the preview. There's the instructions. I'll tell you how to do it. Quiz one, how many days early? Quiz two, what's the MD5 of your pirate? Because if this was you, you just got to sign pirate. You all see that? Work on image after you have a full pirate. What's the MD5? You put it in there. And question three, upload your completed document. Boom, quiz is over. Okay, so the MD5 hash is sound clear. Online MD5. Okay, just, I just want to make sure. Yeah, go here. It's that very first one. When you download the sheet for the pirates, just dump it here and it'll tell you right on the other one. Okay? So we can just empty do all the work and then start quizzing. The problem is you need to know what image to use. Okay. And the only way I could randomly give you an image was I had to do it in the quiz. Start the quiz, it'll tell you to use sheep. Or whatever. Now the only problem with that is, say you start the quiz in five minutes. If I change the quiz at all, you'll never see any updates. So I hope I don't have to change anything. I mean, the quiz is really nothing. It's literally, you know, MD5 hash, give me a file. And that's it. So, so just to clarify the MD5, before we've even uh, we've done any work on it in the text editor, we're going to take that image file, dump it in. Okay. So if this is you, you got what your, your image is. I'd say I'm pirate. Okay, you're a pirate. So you're going to go up here to the module. You're going to go over here to lab two. And you're going to say, okay, I'm a pirate. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to say, I'm going to click over here. I'm going to download pirate. And it's downloading. And then I take that image. Yes. Yes. Okay. You're going to go MD5 check. Uh, get the stupid recording out of the way. You're going to go whatever. Okay. Go to this one. You're going to go over here. And you're going to take the pirate and dump it there. And there is the MD5 of the pirate. Done. That's what you think. Copy that and the quiz. Done. Then you got the first question answered. Then go finish the thing. Finish. Now, this image should never change. So I don't care if you upload it now or three hours from now or next week. That hash should never change. And if it does change, that means it's just not going to match mine and something's wrong with the image. But I'll look if all of a sudden anybody, everybody's got the wrong MD5 hash, then I'll have to figure out what the heck's going on. Okay. All right. So I think that's all you need. All right. I'm going to stop the recording.